What's up guys, I made a project file to teach you guys how to use the mouse in Construct3. This is going to be a part of my course that's available for $59.99 per week in um, Patreon. And uh, No, I'm kidding. You guys can get this in the description. I'm going to leave a download link. Basically, the whole point of this is to teach you guys, like I said, about the mouse object type in Construct3. I go over a couple things. I, uh, I teach you how to use... Well, I don't teach you, right? But I, I just show some examples how to uh, uh, um, extract these values, the pointer lock X, absolute, and mouse. And I teach you guys how to how to make this basically. It's, uh, it's a little list. When the numbers one through eight will kind of take you through all the default cursor types that the system has to offer. Starting at one, you'll have the normal, and then hand, text select, crosshair, move, help, wait, and none. Even though none seems like it's gone, it's just invisible. As you can see, when I move my mouse, kind of moves the the X and Y values along with it, it's still there, just invisible. After eight, I have Q and W, which uh, Q turns it into a Dorito and W turns it into a bottle of Mountain Dew. And number nine sets the cursor to a sick explosion. Look at this. Tell me this isn't sick. And I'm gonna basically teach you guys how to do that. Now, before going and showing you guys how I set up all of this section, I'm going to teach you guys what these values mean, basically. So pointer lock X and pointer lock Y, basically it's it's the speed of the mouse at any given moment while it's moving. So it, as it's not moving right now, it'll equalize itself to 1 and 0. It says it's 1 on the X axis, but that's just because you moved it to the right. So it'll be negative if the last thing you did was move it to the left. Same thing with the Y axis, it'll be negative if the last thing you did was move it up and positive if the last thing you did was move it down. Now, apart from sh uh, kind of telling you what direction the mouse was last moved, like I said, it also shows you the speed. So if I were to go rather quickly, it'll turn into a double digit number or maybe a triple digit if I go fast enough. But I'm gonna go to the right quickly and then I'm gonna slow it down for you guys to kind of see what's going on. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but yeah, <laughs> it, it, it gave back a pretty a pretty large number. And I could do the same thing with the left side, double digits, but in the negative side, you know, you could probably get the absolute value and uh, just, you know, work with that. But that's what it does. It tells you how much the mouse has moved, basically, and where. If you know how to use these numbers, it, it tells you how much, how fast and where. It's pretty cool, but it's also kind of hard to work with. So absolute X and absolute Y that is simply the distance in in the window so right here the left and the top are always going to be zero no matter what on any grid in, in most game engines so absolute x for example if you go off the side of the window here right it'll kind of stop at like uh you know a thousand thirty eight right and that's how it's basically telling you that's how big the window is. If you made the window bigger, now remember it's 1038. If you made the window bigger and now you went off of it again, 1400, right? Yeah, that's the absolute X and absolute Y is completely just based off of the window size, which is different from the mouse X and mouse Y, which is based off of your viewport size. So my viewport size is 1920 by 1080. And you'll notice that no matter how big the window is, when I go off the right or the bottom, now the right, for example, right, it's 1920. So if I go off the right, it'll always be around 1920. If you go slow enough, let it detect your mouse. And it'll be around 1920, right? Even though the absolute X, that's a lower number because it's a smaller window size. But mouse X, it doesn't care about the window size. It just uses the viewport size. And if you go off the bottom, you'll be around 1080, just right around there. And yeah, that's how it works. Mouse X depends on your viewport size and absolute depends on the window size. <clears throat> now I'm going to go over how I created that first little um, list here. So for numbers one through eight, I set the cursor, which you can do from the mouse and set cursor style. And here you will see a list of different options. All I did was I uh, picked a different option for all of these for all the different numbers. So I could display all of them from the, the numbers on the keyboard, right? On nine pressed, 
I uh, set this group active and I'll explain that group in a bit but that's the that's the sick explosion part we'll get back to that in a second on Q pressed we're setting the cursor from sprite and we're picking sprite right and uh, you know I chose my sprites basically and uh, W will change it to Mountain Dew Q will change it to the Dorito now one drawback from setting cursor from sprite is that that sprite can't be animated it has to be a static image so to go around that, I made this uh, mouse animation too. I'm not very good at labeling things, sorry. But I set this group to be activated. And um, as soon as it's activated, and uh, it'll still receive that 9 that you press, it's kind of doing the same thing, right? It's receiving it. Um, it'll request pointer lock, so that just means that your mouse sticks on the screen. It won't go off the side of the window or anything. It's, it sticks onto the screen. And then these va this value right here, I just I just chose a random value just to set it somewhere in the canvas. Where I leave it in the canvas doesn't really matter, but if you guys want to be all fancy about it, you can set it right in the center of the canvas. doesn't matter though. It's, it just has to be on the screen. Now, to move that animated sprite around, I, um, I set the X, so I get the X, right? And then I add the mouse movement, which is uh, the pointer lock value. Remember how I told you that if you moved it really fast, it'll be a bigger number. And if you move it slowly, it'll be a lower number. So yeah, depending on how you move your mouse, that velocity, it'll add it on to the X and it'll multiply it by the sensitivity. And you can change the sensitivity to anything. It's just a multiplier of the, of the pointer lock value. And in this case, it's multiplying the pointer lock value by, um, by two. And this is how you would get that value. Mouse movement X. And the same thing with Y. And that's how I'm kind of keeping track of where Sprite 4 is. Now you might have seen that on some uh, previous examples like this one. Or basically all of them. I, I'm calling the function safe leave. Uh, safe leave. Oops. Ignore that. <laughs> it's um, safe leave. It just lets me safely leave mouse animation too. I have to, I have to release the pointer lock. Deactivate the group and set the position of the of the explosion off screen and i'm doing that for all of them because i i really don't know when i'm leaving the group so i'm just making sure i'm just putting it everywhere no matter what it'll uh, deactivate and you know safely leave right here for the text uh i just uh, instead of on take i put on movement which is kind of the same thing but doesn't use the cpu when you're not moving you know it's kind of self-explanatory but this is all the values that you see on the left. You guys can check these out. See how you get them right here. It's a little, I don't know, a little table of contents for you guys. Last two things I wanted to go over was the cursor over sprite uh, function. And right here I'm just checking if the, the cursor is over sprite 3. It'll, um, it'll kind of flash a little animation. And as you can see. Only while it's over the sprite does it flash that little animation. And last but not least, I wanted to show you guys about the mouse wheel up and down. And that's about how you use it. You just change the Y when it's going down or up. If I wanted it to go faster, I could probably do um, uh, 50, you know. This is the, the five, this, whatever it's subtracting or adding, that's, that's the sensitivity. Yeah, hopefully you guys learned something new and uh, thanks for watching.